Good morning, gentlemen. Today is uh, Tuesday, April the 21th, and uh, today we are going to talk about a concept called rotational inertia, right? Rotational inertia. Now, um, whoa. Or never mind. There we go. This is what we're talking about. Uh, so section 11.4 um, is entitled Rotational Inertia. Now, I want you to think back a little bit to our uh, discussions of the concept of inertia uh, a few months ago, I guess. Inertia, remember, is really just uh, the mass of an object. And um, by definition, it is the resistance of an object to a change in its motion. So how hard is it to get a stationary object to move? And how hard is it to get a moving object to stop, right? That's a measure of its inertia. And of course, that's completely dependent upon how much mass the object has. So it's harder to stop a freight train than it is to stop a skateboard, right? Because this freight train has much more mass, right? It's harder to um, get a car to move if you're trying to push it off the road than it is to move, um, I don't know, a, a, a little red wagon. Because again, the car has more mass than the little red wagon has. Now, when we add the idea of a rotating object to this concept of inertia, we end up changing the definition just a little bit. The resistance of an object um, rotational inertia is the resistance of an object to changes in its rotational motion. And while mass still plays a very major role here, now we also have to add to this idea the distance of that mass from the center of rotation, from the axis of rotation. Okay. Now, according to Newton's laws, all right, an object in motion tends to remain in motion. Well, the same kind of deal is true with a rotating object. Rotating objects tend to keep rotating, while non-rotating objects tend to, to, re, to remain or stay non-rotating. They don't change their, their motion. And so that's, the, that's really the inertia part of that, right? That really comes from Newton's law of inertia, right? An object in motion tends to remain in motion. Well, an object that's rotating tends to uh, continue to rotate. Now, um, the, the differences here come in the distribution of the mass. When are we going to actually, uh, or how do we rotate an object, right? Well, the the closer the mass is to the center of rotation, the easier it is to rotate, okay? And so the, the distribution of the mass becomes very, very important here, all right? And you can see that popping up on the screen right now. This all depends on the distribution of mass. Now, hang on a second. Let me ask you this, all right? Why? do baseball players sometimes choke up on the bat? All right, well, if you start, I can't really swing this here because of the, the wall, I don't wanna hit my wall, all right? But if you, if you swing the bat here, you get more power out of the swing, but it's also harder to move the bat. If you choke up on the bat, it's easier to swing, all right? And you can go out and get yourself a baseball bat and try this, all right? If you hold it at the very end, it's harder to swing, Okay, if you hold it up close, it's easier to swing, quicker to swing. All right, and that has to do with rotational inertia. All right, and so a good example of rotational inertia is ch uh, choking up on a bat. All right, now when you do uh, deal with rotational inertia, there's a couple of things that you have to keep in mind. All right, um, to begin, the um, with rotational inertia, all right, an object that's rotating about an axis tends to remain rotating about the same axis at the, uh, at the same rotational speed, unless it's interfered with by some external influence. In other words, a force or a torque in this case, 
All right. And so uh, the example that's on the screen now with the dumbbells there, all right, if the weights are held are close to the axis of rotation, which in this example is the hand, right, then uh, it's easy to rotate. But if you move those masses away from that axis of rotation, increasing that distance, you change the torque and therefore you give the object greater rotational inertia. So that leads to differences in uh, mathematical formulas for rotational inertia. If we start with a, um, a solid disk, all right, um, or um, something along those lines, actually, we'll start with, with um, uh, something a little bit different. All right, first, the uh, formula for rotational inertia is I for inertia equals m r squared, where m of course is the mass, and uh, r squared uh, or r represents the radius or the distance from the center of rotation. Examples of objects that would use this are things like simple pendula. Okay, and you can see where the radius comes into play here. All right, using a simple pendulum. All right, so if you have a tennis ball and you're, it, the radius of its rotation is the length of the string from, from my hand to the ball, all right, you can see that it takes a certain amount of time to move back and forth. Now, if you take that same pendulum and you shorten the radius, now it swings back and forth much faster, okay? And so, uh, the distance plays a, a huge role, all right? How far is the mass from the axis of rotation, okay? How far is the mass from the axis of rotation? The longer the axis of rotation, the more inertia, rotational inertia, the thing will have. So if the mass is distributed evenly, all right, like in a solid disk, um, then the uh, inertia is actually cut by a factor of half. And so the, the formula for the rotational inertia of a solid cylinder is one half mr squared. So a hollow uh, hula hoop um, or a, a tennis ball hanging from a string will actually have more rotational inertia than a solid disc. Okay, so what does that lead us to? All right, well, first of all, uh, there are other formulas for rotational inertia, and we're not we're not going to get into them uh, today. But if you look on page one hundred and fifty seven in your textbook, you'll see that there are uh, formulas for all sorts of different sizes and shapes. Okay. Now, here's a quick question: Which one of these two objects ha first has more inertia than the other? All right. Well, you can see the two formulas: the formula for the solid disc and the sol and the formula for the hoop. All right, and just looking at them, assuming that they have the same mass and the same circumference, same radius, then the hoop actually has more inertia than the disc does. All right, so a solid uh, cylinder and a hollow cylinder with the same mass and radius will have different rotational inertias. But here's the real, the practical application of this. Those, these two things, the, this, the solid blue disc and the green hoop, have, this, have different rotational inertias, but the same mass and the same radius. Which one, if we, I release them at the same time, which one reaches the ground first? Hmm, interesting question. Well, because the hoop has more inertia, it will actually uh, be slower rolling down, ro accelerating, rolling down the hill. And the, the, so the blue disc will actually reach the bottom of the hill first, okay? Believe it or not, the, the solid blue disc, because it's got less rotational inertia, will reach the bottom of the ramp first. The green hoop will actually be slower because it has more rotational inertia. All right, I wish that we were in our classroom because I have uh, all sorts of wonderful uh, uh, demonstrations that I could show you. Um, but unfortunately, we are still on uh, this uh, remote learning business. All right, and so uh, you're just gonna have to take my word for it for now. 
hopefully, hopefully we will get back to school uh, and I can show you some of these, uh, these fun things. Anyway, uh, so the, solid, the moral of the story here is that the solid cylinder will accelerate down an incline faster than the hollow cylinder because the hollow cylinder has more rotational inertia. All right, and that's the moral of the story here. Okay, the, uh, the mass of that hollow cylinder is concentrated around the outside as opposed to in the middle, and therefore um, it's further away from that center of uh, rotation, from the axis of rotation. Okay, all right. Any questions about any of that stuff, send me an email. All right, um, and again, you should be reading uh, section 11.4 in your textbook to go along with this. Okay, so the solid cylinder will accelerate down an incline faster than the hollow cylinder because the hollow cylinder's mass is concentrated further away from the center. Okay, in other words, the hollow uh, cylinder has more inertia. Okay, <clears throat> so what else do we have to, uh, to say about all of this? Well, this is um, a, just a, a, another picture of those two things. And because I couldn't show this to you live, uh, I wanted to show it to you in, in at least a pictorial form. Um, I actually pulled this, uh, this picture right out of your uh, textbook. Um, and so you can see it here, all right? The solid cylinder is rolling down the incline with a greater acceleration than the hollow disc. So objects of the same shape and mass uh, but and, but different sizes accelerate equally when rolled down an incline. But a cylinder with smaller rotational inertia will roll down an incline more quickly than a cylinder with greater rotational inertia because it uh, requires more time to start rolling. It's got more inertia, all right? And so a solid cylinder has less rotational inertia and will roll down an incline more quickly. A hollow cylinder has more rotational inertia because its mass is located farther away from the axis of rotation, and therefore it will take longer. Okay, so let's do, let's talk about a couple of examples here. All right, we'll start with example number three from uh, section 11.4. Um, and the, the question is, um, when swinging your leg from your hip, all right, so uh, walking essentially. Um, why is the rotational inertia uh, of the leg less when it is bent? Okay, so when swinging your leg from your hip, why is the rotational inertia less when your leg is bent? All right. Well, if you ever if you've ever watched soldiers marching, uh, and we don't do this. Uh, in the United States, but the, the the goose step, right, where the legs are held completely straight, all right, very uncomfortable to do that. And um, although I guess it looks impressive, uh, it's a very inefficient way to walk. Why? Because the mass is just uh, the mass of the leg is distributed further away from the axis of rotation, all right. Um, and so bending your leg bent at the knee actually brings the mass of your leg closer to your hip where it's actually doing the rotation and therefore you you uh, decrease the radius and uh, therefore decrease the uh, overall rotational inertia okay and so when you walk you naturally bend your knees when you run you naturally bend your knees <coughs> and the reason that you do that is because that decreases the rotational inertia, all right? So when swinging your leg from your hip, um, the rotational inertia of the leg is less when it's bent because the mass is closer to the axis of rotation. Okay, now um, example number uh, four is a similar kind of thing, but it really goes back to uh, rolling the, the um, objects down an incline in this case, okay? So let's say we have a, a heavy iron cylinder and a lighter wooden cylinder, okay? Um, but they have the same shape, okay? They're both cylinders, right? Um, which one will have more acceleration, okay? 
So a heavy iron cylinder and a light wooden cylinder, um, which have a similar shape, roll down an incline. And the question is, which one has a greater inertia? All right, or I'm sorry, which one will have more acceleration? And the, uh, the answer is that the two objects actually have um, different masses, but they have the same rotational inertia per unit mass. All right, and therefore they will uh, accelerate down the incline at the same rate. All right, so a heavy iron cylinder and a light wooden cylinder similar in shape, roll down an incline, they will have the same acceleration because their mass is distributed the same way about their axes of rotation, okay? And so we still use that same formula for rotational inertia, I equals uh, uh, mv squared, or I'm sorry, m, uh, one half mr squared, okay? All right, so, that ends our discussion of rotational inertia for today. Um, I would like to remind you that you do have an assignment due. Uh, it'll be due tomorrow by end of day. Um, so, you know, whenever you get, as long as I get it before midnight um, on Wednesday, April the 22nd, we'll, we're, we're good. Um, but it will be worksheet 11-1. Uh, and I will, of course, attach this to the portal page for uh, today. All right. All right, gentlemen. Happy Tuesday.